Well, thanks to our federal government's complete betrayal of Canadian youth, hardly any young person in this country can find a good summer job. We're now at the point where even the CBC and the Globe and Mail are acknowledging this phenomenon. It's just far too obvious to be ignored. Ask any young person you know who is looking for an entry-level job, and they will all likely tell you the same thing, that they are being rejected too many times to count. Their story might sound like this. Others are still searching, like Zach McDevitt, who's home from university for the summer. You know, stressful. I mean, I, I was hoping to make money because it's hard to balance a job in school. So I was hoping to like work a lot over the summer and make a lot of money. But that's, you know, tough when you can't find a job. But what do you see when you go into a fast food restaurant or a grocery store around Canada's large cities? Well, that was a trick question. You see non-Canadians working. Just go to a Tim Hortons. It's time to just be completely honest about the situation that we are in. Young Canadians can't find work when there seems to be an abundant supply of work for non-Canadians. What exactly is going on here? Now, what's really remarkable about this situation is that while the legacy media and Canada's political class will say nothing at all about how record levels of mass immigration are fueling this summer jobs crisis, Canada's banks, like RBC, seem to have no problem at calling out the source of this problem. Ultimately, the financial success and prosperity of our own youth in this country is being sacrificed at the altar of permanent population growth. And to be honest, I can't think of anything more disgusting than that. Before we get into this show, be sure to drop a like on the video, help us out by subscribing to the True North YouTube channel. And the common question for the episode is this. Have you heard similar stories from young Canadians who are struggling to find work? If so, let me know in the comments section below. All right, let's get into it. We'll take a look at this video released by the CBC in Vancouver last week and tell me if anything catches your eye. Thomas Kempin was celebrating not only his high school graduation on Monday, he finally landed a summer gig after applying to 30 jobs over the past two years. This didn't have much experience working a job, so I guess they didn't like consider me. He'll be working at Superstore, relieved he can start saving up for university in the fall, but says the lengthy job search was discouraging. And some of the times they just don't even call back or anything that you've gotten rejected. You just don't know. It's been quite difficult. Others are still searching, like Zach McDevitt, who's home from university for the summer. You know, stressful. I mean, I, I was hoping to make money because it's hard to balance a job in school. So I was hoping to like work a lot over the summer and make a lot of money, but that's, you know, tough when you can't find a job. A fiercely competitive job market means young people across Vancouver are struggling to score work, according to a youth employment coordinator. Did you notice that those two young Canadians were actually Canadians, not newcomers, migrants, international students protesting in the street, demanding a postgraduate work permit extension? They did everything right. They grew up in this country. They went to high school in this country. And now they can't even get a grocery store job or a fast food restaurant job or any other entry level job. Oh, and it's not just two young Canadian kids in Vancouver. Take a look at this article from the CBC last week. Hundreds of rejections, a hard reality for high school students looking for summer jobs. Young people between the ages of 15 to 24 are struggling the most with finding jobs. The national unemployment rate for youth in Canada aged 15 to 24, is over 12%. It's at 12.8%. Excluding the pandemic, that's the highest rate of youth unemployment since July 2016. When you break that unemployment data down into specific regions across the country and cities like London, Ontario, you see that the youth unemployment rate in London is over 14%. Unemployment across Canada is rising, but it's youth aged 15 to 24 with the highest spike in unemployment. That's driving the national unemployment rate. In fact, in April of 2024, the youth employment rate reached its lowest level since 2012. From the Globe and Mail last week, young Canadians are struggling to get summer jobs in the face of high interest rates, layoffs, and fierce competition. Oh, fierce competition? Fierce competition for entry-level jobs? What could they mean by that? What do they mean when they say fierce competition? Does the Globe and Mail perhaps mean mass immigration? Millions of people coming into Canada with low skills, competing for entry-level jobs, which should be going to young Canadians, not 
international students, not temporary foreign workers? Oh, would you just look at that? Employers in Canada are hiring temporary foreign workers for fast food jobs, while Canadians can't find summer work. Look at this article from Radio Canada. From fast food to construction, employers turn more and more to temporary foreign workers. Businesses' demand for temporary foreign workers has surged across the country in recent years, with employers given the green light to hire more than double the people through the federal program last year as they did just five years ago. 239,646 temporary foreign workers were hired last year. Compare that to 2018, when 108,000 temporary foreign workers were hired. And take a look at this graph, which shows the percentage change of reliance on temporary foreign workers broken down by job. And I'm just gonna highlight some of the typical youth summer jobs. Let's start with cooks, being a line cook. From 2018 to 2023, the number of temporary foreign workers hired to be line cooks has increased 279%. How about this? Food counter attendants, kitchen helpers, and related support occupations. Working in a fast food restaurant. Are you ready for this number? Hold on to your chairs. From 2018 to 2023, the percentage change of the hiring of temporary foreign workers for that specific job is up 4,802%. 4,802%. In construction, 3,955%. Retail sales supervisors working in retail, that number has gone up by 426%. Not only is Canada's unemployment rate rising month by month, Canada's actually losing jobs. In June, Canada lost 1,400 jobs across the country right as the summer season begins. No one at the political level is willing to actually address this. No one is willing to say that employers in this country are increasingly relying on foreigners to work jobs which should be going to young Canadians. No one is willing to actually stop the flow of newcomers into this country without any skills to put the needs of Canadians first. Because who actually wins from this? We know it's not young Canadians whose needs should be put first. It's large corporations. It's business lobbying groups like the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses who likes to remind us all, oh, that young Canadians just don't want to work these jobs. Young Canadians aren't willing to get their hands dirty. They're lazy. You have to hire foreigners for this work. That's a lie, all right? That's a complete lie. We all know it's a lie. And it has been allowed to go on to this point. When is a politician actually going to say enough of this? My duty is to Canadians. My duty is to the Canadian people, not to foreigners and not to large corporate interests. The closest we've gotten to the legacy media calling out mass immigration for this summer jobs crisis was that Radio Canada article detailing the percentage change in reliance on temporary foreign workers. We just don't see it from them because they don't want to end the party as well. The legacy media have sold out the Canadian people just like the politicians have. But RBC Bank, they don't seem to have an issue with calling out record population growth triggering this summer jobs crisis. In fact, as far back as in January of this year, they called it out directly. Take a look at this. Students and new graduates are bearing the brunt of the labor market downturn. While new arrivals to Canada have been driving population growth higher, it's actually students and new graduates that have been driving unemployment rate increases. With population growth surging, higher unemployment has come predominantly from slower hiring rather than more firing. National employment counts are still rising, but no longer quickly enough to absorb new labor market entrants. And just take a look at this graph here, published by Indeed, which shows the situation that we are in right now. It's the growing gap between population growth and employment in this country. It actually seemed to be tracking until about the midpoint of 2023, and then it just broke off, with young Canadians being left behind. If you're curious as to how exactly employers can get away with hiring temporary foreign workers or international students and not actually hiring Canadians, well, they do so through the process of LMIA, Labor Market Impact Assessment. We've talked about this before on the show, but I want to highlight one egregious example of LMIA exploitation. 
immigration consultants like Global Gateway Visa will purchase pre-approved LMIAs. These are applications to Employment Canada to justify and explain to the government why they can't hire a Canadian for a specific job and it would allow them to then hire a foreigner for that job. They will pre-approve many different LMIAs for jobs like Butcher Meat Chef in Ontario. What the hell is even that? Or Pizza Cook in Ontario. Food Supervisor Baker or Pastry Chef. They will then sell those LMIAs, sell those jobs to foreigners for upwards of $10,000. Even more sometimes. I've heard stories of LMIAs being sold for $30,000. You have to understand, the federal government is complicit in this. They are the ones that allow LMIA exploitation to happen. They sign off on LMIA exploitation. It is a written contract between the federal government and an employer to leave Canadians behind and hire foreigners. Because we are supposed to believe that there is not a Canadian who could be a butcher. There is not a Canadian who could be a pizza cook. They couldn't hire a Canadian to be a fish plant worker. So foreigners, immigration consultants, and the federal government are basically in on it together. Using LMIA as a way to avoid hiring Canadians, drive down wages, and leave Canadians behind while putting the needs of non-Canadians first. And what do we see from groups like the Ontario Federation of Labour? A union that is supposed to work for the interests of Ontario workers? Well, they're out there in Brampton protesting with international students demanding to be given permanent residency. What do we see from labour groups and business lobbying organizations? Well, they're the ones telling the federal government that Canadians just won't work and we need to hire foreigners. You may have heard of the Canada Summer Jobs Program, where the federal government produces a wage subsidy to hire young Canadians for summer jobs, as you kind of guessed. And the federal government rates your application to receive a wage subsidy for the Canada Summer Jobs Program on a points basis. And I wanna highlight one of the assessment criteria for you as to how the federal government determines who gets the subsidy. One of the objectives of the program is to respond to national and local priorities to improve access for youth who face unique barriers. You get 25 points if you do this, 15 points if you fulfill a national priority. What are some of these national priorities you're probably asking? Well, let's just go through them. One of the national priorities is to provide opportunities for youth with disabilities, which I think is good. Another national priority is to provide opportunities for youth in rural areas. Again, something I think is very important. And then there's this national priority, opportunities for youth that are underrepresented in the labor market, including black and other racialized youth, indigenous youth, and 2SLGBTQI plus youth. Now, why would excluding white youth be a national priority for the federal government. I think the problem is faced by all youth in this country, but they're actually incentivizing hiring non-white youth for these jobs. And imagine the points you would get if you hired a rural non-white youth with a disability. Why is the federal government excluding white people from one of their national priorities, explicitly excluding white people, while the federal government also greenlights LMIA exploitation for jobs at restaurants, for jobs at fast food chains and grocery stores. There's, there's only one word for it, and it's betrayal. Betrayal of Canadians. The future of young Canadians has been sold out, and it's hard to think of anything more disgraceful. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for us today on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Harrison Faulkner, and this is Ratio.